Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks, and also welcome back to my playing series on YouTube, where I'm going to be playing live without the ability to cherry pick my games. So maybe you'll get some real gameplay here. So in today's video, I'm going to be playing the best tier nine tanks in the game, and I'm going to be basing it on win ratio in the last 30 days on the European server. So is it any surprise that the tortoise is on top? This big boy British tank destroyer has the highest DPM in the game outside of its bigger brother, the Badger. Although the Badger, it's only just a touch higher. It's like six DPM higher, which doesn't even really uh, count uh, when you're jumping up an entire tier. Although, you know, if we're, if we're actually being pedantic about it, the Badger does have slightly higher DPM. But the Tortoise is just so much more special because it has pretty much the same, but at a lower tier. But it still has amazing durability with 2,000 hit points great armor as well and the only thing that really holds this vehicle back is the mobility but now that there's equipment in the game uh well at least if you think about it over the whole history of playing the tortoise like the turbo that can now speed the tank up then you're really mitigating the main weakness that the vehicle had being able to go 20 percent faster because of a single piece of equipment has really kind of revolutionized the way that you can play the tortoise all right this matchup is really scary. They got two chieftains, they got a 60 TP. Ah, this one could be a little bit ugly, boys and girls. Nevertheless, we're still going to try and make our way towards the south. We do have a bit of a weak point on top of the tank, which I know my opponents are going to farm. So what I might have to do is try and set an ambush, or try and just hold back a little bit and try and get my opponents to commit. If I can get my opponents to commit, then I should be good. I got a funny feeling that Wargaming just handed out all of the chieftains. Uh that were available uh, from the current clan war season that has just finished, right? So I think there are probably going to be a lot of very loose chieftains about maybe uh, players who don't quite know their tank yet, or uh, there's going to be a lot of them in the matchmaker. Just what we needed, right? After my last video a couple of days ago where I talked about why everybody's playing the Kranvang, uh, yeah, more hull down god tier tanks which you can't pen their turret and they've got good alpha damage to be able to deal with you inside the matchmaker. Thanks, Wargaming. You really need to give the best players the best tanks. That's that's totally the uh, the correct idea. Anyway, I digress. Let's focus on the tortoise. This thing used to lead on to the FV215B 183. Can you believe it? All that time ago, the British tier 10 tank destroyer used to be the um, used to be the top tier, the FV215B 183. Then Wargaming decided to. Uh, put a whole new tank in, the FV4005, and it was just so bizarre that you could be playing the tortoise and then you could actually like lead up to that vehicle, but oh my word, this is where the tortoise just excels as long as I can track this player. I'm just gonna track him. I won't tra I won't fall back if that's okay. How about I like, I don't know, track him and, and, and win? Is that okay? I don't know. I understand that maybe I was blocking his shot, but I really felt like I had the, uh, the highest DPM in the game to be able to go after that 60 TP. And while I didn't get the uh, damage in, I definitely got that tracking in. And that's one of my favorite things about the uh, the uh, tortoise, is that its rate of fire is actually so much better um, than the badger, which allows you to just consistently get your shots in. All right, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go. We're gonna go. I just can't see us winning this game unless we go. So I'm gonna go. Bounce that. I'm gonna gonna repair that track gonna track him he's tracked me hopefully I don't get slammed by the griller again this person's pushing my my broken tank well with regards to tracks around the corner and then this player's gonna drive out in front I'm still gonna get the shot in he's gonna somehow fail radio operators down that's okay and should we go say hello to this chieftain oh if my whole team could just stop oh, we're just gonna track him here we're gonna ramp his tracks a little bit more no we're not gonna go for the shot on the hull and oh mate doesn't look like that Clan Wars tank is working out too well for you. And that's really where the, the Tortoise is just absolutely revolutionary with regards to what it can do in World of Tanks. There's just no other vehicle that kind of has the, well, obviously the Badger at top tier. But there's no real other vehicle that can just be as voracious as this tank with regards to the damage that it deals and also just back it up with the durability. There are a lot of other glass cannon tanks in World of Tanks, right? There's loads of them. There's tons of vehicles which are glass cannons, but there are hardly any which are... Uh, and when I say glass cannons, I mean tanks with high DPM, but terrible armor. 
but there are hardly any vehicles that have great DPM and also the great armor to be able to back it up. And that's why this thing is just so darn dominant. Okay, so that 263 seems to be locked in place. Uh, it doesn't look like I'm tracking him in any anymore, unfortunately. Um, but luckily, my team is going to be able to deal with that. So I need to keep going back to base, I think. Maybe I can get this T-54 out in the open. Oh, this could be good. Got to watch out for him, though. Oh, my gun's damaged, but we should be okay. I'm going to repair it. Way there we go. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, we got rid of that player. Now let's see if we can work after this T-54. So I'm going to track him on the move. And this is where the tortoise is, God. Yeah, okay, mate. You can fire your gold rounds up the top of my tank. Let's see who wins the uh, the trade. Oh, he could actually get me now with the 75. No, he doesn't. Okay, there's a gorilla above me. Gorilla doesn't shoot me in the side. Well, gorilla's fired, so I'm actually going to try and avoid the E75 shell to the side of my tank here. Hopefully I do, because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use intuition to turn, and I'm going to turn the highest DPM in the game into even more DPM. How about that? Please, Gorilla bounces. Yes, baby! 500 damage a shot with the HE intuition, and he's out of there. Although it wasn't me, it was the Emil. Okay, well, you know what? I'll, I'll take this for a game, uh, and this is why just the tortoise does so darn well. 3,300 damage blocked combined with uh, accuracy, DPM, you know, everything, man. How can you not rock and roll in this vehicle? And so it really doesn't surprise me that this tank is packing a 53% uh, average win ratio. So that means for everybody who gets 50, there's somebody out there doing 56. And for all of the players who are who are not doing so well in the tortoise, and they're only getting there like 46, then goodness gracious, there must be somebody out there averaging 70, uh, sorry, 60% win ratio in this tank. Amazing, right? Um, so, yeah, tortoise. Should you get it? Yeah, why not? Uh, it really is one of those kind of fun tanks as well, where you do feel like you can just go down swinging constantly. Uh... It always is good even in a loss, because you just feel like you can just do massive damage to your opponents as well. Do you know what? My tortoise isn't even fully finished yet as well. I don't even have all the field mods on this thing, so I could get an extra 3% rate of fire in this game. And yeah, the only sad part of the tortoise is at this latter part of the game where you're just a little bit too slow to be able to get around. But you know what? I'm, I'm happy with the 7,000 combined and then the 3,700 blocked damage on top of that as well. Alrighty then, so now I've just got a predicament because uh, I did actually see what was next on the list. The tank that was next was the T95. Now, part of me when I'm doing these playing videos, I don't really want to just play another tank which is very similar, right? But come on, it's a T95. Plus, I feel like my, um, my awesome audience that plays on the NA server might accuse me of some kind of British bias if I decide not to play the the ridiculous um, American tier 9 tank destroyer. And the T95, probably one of the best in the game as well. Well, obviously it is because it's packing one of the most crazy win ratios, right? Don't know why my team isn't just managing to finish off this T54E1 a little bit quicker. Uh, thank goodness they got there in the end. Um, and yeah, this is the only sad part of the game for the tortoise. Just not really being able to catch your opponents at the end because you're a little bit slow. And you've got, you know, fast tanks like gorillas and chieftains all bombing it around and being able to pick up all of the extra juice. But, you know, at least the tortoise is a little bit faster these days. It's probably where the badger is actually better than the tortoise, just a little bit in that regard. Uh, will be just the, the mobility. But it's really the, the alpha damage that is special on the tortoise. And you might be going, what would you mean, QB? Why uh, the badger's got higher alpha damage? Isn't higher alpha damage better? Sure. But when you've got an immobile vehicle like this that wants to track its opponents and then advance to the side like I did against the T-54, it's actually better to have a better rate of fire with still having enough alpha damage to be able to deal with your opponents. Alright, so that was a fairly meaty game of World of Tanks. We didn't finish top on damage. That was the Chieftain because he was able to get around the map. But we finished top on experience. 1,382 is not an ace tanker, just showing you how well this thing performs. I'm going to boost that experience up because one day I want to be able to have that ammo rack reconfiguration. I'll lose a little bit of hit points, but to be able to gain that rate of fire, ooh, talk about being savage. Alrighty then, so next up... I'm going to play the T95. You know, why wouldn't I? The T95 is also a fun tank. Plus, I set up my T95 in a real stupid way. Although, real stupid fun, I would I would argue. I use uh, the durability module. I use 
bounty protection technology, and I use a turbo on this tank. I would actually quite like to use a, a bounty turbo, um, but I can't be bothered to take it off one of my other vehicles if I'm only going to play for a single game. That's quite expensive. I don't really want to use the demounting equipment or the, or the 10 gold. I'm also going to use no repair kit on this vehicle um, because I feel with the bounty protection technology, it doesn't even really matter if I get ammo racked. It doesn't matter too much if my gun gets damaged, if I've got the armorer skill. Um, and more importantly, that allows me to use fuel. And really, with this vehicle, its power to weight ratio is abysmal. And even once you've got the field mods, I do feel like the engine power is a little bit lacking. I think the kind of things that you can do with the T95 with pumping up its mobility is just far outweighs what you can do by, for example, trying to f focus up its firepower. If you want to play with firepower, why don't you play something like a tortoise that we just played, right? This vehicle is more about just being this mobile bunker that rolls forwards and trolls with its 750 alpha damage. Think about it like this. For me in a T95, I don't even really want to use a gun rammer because it's not about firing and then needing to reload quickly to be able to survive the engagement. That doesn't really happen all that often in the T95. It's more about firing uh, as consistently as you can and then being able to... Uh, you've got the higher alpha damage so you want to be able to to trade with your opponents and out trade them that way rather than just going for the dpm on the tortoise which is why i will always use a gun rammer and vents on a tortoise to be able to maximize my dpm capacity all right so unlike the last game where we had a very bad matchup we've actually got a real good one here there's no rt to worry about unlike last game. There's no tier 10 chieftains to worry about, unlike last game. And I love that, because my tortoise is going to do way better in the previous matchup, and this T95 is going to do way better in this one. And that is because, of course, the tortoise has the DPM to be able to clap its opponents. Uh, but if you were to take a T95 and put it against all the RT, it wouldn't be so good. Uh, and also, it, the T95 wouldn't have that DPM to be able to be aggressive through that situation like I was. Wow, a ladybird literally just flew on my monitor. Ladybird, no, don't go onto my keyboard. No, no, look, look. Oh, ah, no, no, I didn't just do this. Not the ladybird. Oh, my goodness. You actually kidding me. You killed me, ladybird. Oh, you couldn't have scripted this. Jeez, Louise. The Conway says T95. Uh, man, man, a lady, a ladybird just flew on my monitor. And is this uh, can is this when like animals cause car crashes? Oh my goodness gracious! Like, like actual W WTF? This this little assassin. My goodness gracious. Oh, well. And whatever. I feel like I'm giving the excuse to, like, a, a teacher as to why I didn't do my homework. <sighs> well, okay. I'm, I'm sorry for all of you. I'm sorry for all of you, uh, you T95 fans out there. Did I really just drive off a bridge? Well, this session just took a turn for the worse. Oh, well. Um, I think we found out what the best tank destroyer is clearly the tortoise right not the t95 especially when there are ladybirds flying onto your monitor and then distracting you um thanks bud now it's on my stick that i used to open the window that's awesome anyway that was the t95 now we're going to be playing in the amx m451 uh so the amx m451 is a tier 9 american that's no, not American, it's French. I'm so flustered from that bloody la ladybird and I just drove off a bridge. I don't think I've done that. <laughs> well, of course I haven't. I haven't had a situation where a ladybird has flown on my monitor and then got me destroyed at the worst possible time on a bridge. I don't even know what to say. You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm really interested to see what the comments on YouTube are going to be now. Anyway, let's play the AMX M451. I'm going to be playing this thing with vents, a gun rammer and a turbo. And the reason why this thing is a monster is because it's just got really good frontal armor. And also importantly, uh, it actually comes with the best gun as the stock gun. So there's no doubt that the win ratio of the AMX M451 is going to be slightly inflated with regards to the statistics. Just like with the 430. If you were to go and take a look and just basically judge whether a tank was good on its win ratio when it's a tech tree tank, it's not kind of fair. 
And the reason why it's not kind of fair is because some tanks are awful stock and some tanks are not awful stock. And this is one of the vehicles that is not awful stock and so its win ratio is a little bit better than it would be if you were to probably only compare the statistics of the tank when it was everybody had it elite, right? Nevertheless, even when this tank is elite, it's got it's no slouch. Um, it's a tank that uh, you just really question why you would actually play the tier 10. Because the tier 10 is practically this tank with just a little bit more armor. Not really even that better rate of fire. Um, honestly, if you're making your way up the French heavy tanks, I thoroughly recommend that you, you don't bother to get the tier 10. Or if you do get the tier 10, make sure you don't sell the tier 9 to be able to afford to purchase it. Until you've played the tier 10, realize that's the tank for you, and then if you feel that way, then then definitely, yeah, consider getting rid of the tank. But there's no doubt, there's absolutely no doubt that the AMX M451 is a way more powerful tank, tier for tier, at tier 9, than the tier 10 is. Alright, so there's an AMX 30, looks like he wants to try and push that corner. Um, trying to think about whether I can just shove him. I might get caught at the back, but also that there's a chance that we can really uh, get this guy's tracks. Maybe somebody else shoots his tracks. He'll be in a lot of pain if he does that. And yeah, this is where you can just feel a little bit confident in this tank. That it's got that armor. That it's got that frontal armor. Um, it's not very good from the side, but as long as you're keeping the frontal part towards your opponents, it's, it's pretty darn good. Not every vehicle has really good side armor when you think about it. E3 is a, a prime example of that. Um, it's just it's just an all-round solid tier 9 that can really do a little bit of everything. I'm just going to lock this guy's tracks down because I know that he's going to get absolutely clapped there. He used a repair kit, so if I can manage to repair my tracks, get my gun back in, then I should be able to lock this guy's tracks down again. And then, hopefully... Okay, you can get the kill, Chieftain. It's fine. There you go. I lined up to make sure I didn't block him there. Um, I can tell this guy I'm going to help him. Come on, mate. Let's go get these guys. Maybe I should have shot the E50 there and let my friend get him there. Is that his front or his back? It's his front. You can actually shoot through the ears of the E50 there sometimes. I'm going to tell my team that I'm reloading. Got to be careful that I don't get clapped from the back. But nevertheless, is that e E50 going to die to the E3? Yes, he is. All right, so I guess we're really taking the fight to the enemy team. I'm quite lucky to be defending. But you just see how this thing just claps? It really does. It just absolutely claps. Um, is that Chieftain where I think he is? Yeah, he is. He's just chilling there. Man, that Chieftain doesn't look too particularly wonderful. Who shot this guy? Oh, no, he's getting nailed from the side. Should I try and protect him? I was going to try and protect his tracks. I'm trying to help my E3 friend. Who do you think was shooting him from up there? Oh no, Chieftain in the side. This isn't going to be good for me. There's the Udez. i got to be really careful because I can get shot from up high as well right now. Is there ever a Chieftain that isn't firing gold? Probs not. Is there a Chieftain who's not firing gold and rolling high? <laughs> Dude, I just realized we're actually um, in a really dangerous situation here. This is actually really bad. Um, this game's damn close. My team are getting far too confident. Uh, hopefully I can manage to get this E4 in the side. There we go. How nice is this gun? And can you believe this is the stock gun, boys and girls? This is the stock gun. This guy's going to come around the corner at me. I've got to be a bit careful here. I'm going to ask the Skoda for help. That guy's going to shoot the E4. I've got to try and... Oh, no, no, no. Oh, where's that T95 facing? He's facing me. Oh, my lord. The ladybird's flying around the room again, trying to get me killed again. Don't do this, ladybird. Please. Please, please, please. You've already taken one of my games away from me today. Please don't take multiple games. My lord. It's the invasion of the ladybirds. You can tell it's starting to become spring in the UK. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right. I wonder if... Oh, wow. Look at this. Chieftain versus E3. He's got to be really careful. E3's got to be careful. I just got to hold on, though. Hopefully this T95... Oh, hello. T95 in the side. Don't mind if I do. Oh, I bounced. Oh, no. VK, have mercy. I'm just a poor little French tank. Nice. He did miss, actually. 
Oh, he got me in the lower plate. That's not good. Here comes the T95. Did the T95 miss? I guess I gotta track this guy. Oh, he's got a repair kit. Alright. Wish me luck, boys and girls. No! He had a really good rate of fire, actually. What a shame that my tier 10s aren't creating the crossfire with me. Uh, I guess he's locked down by a chieftain. Oh, well. Well played to the chieftain on the enemy team. He basically managed to just carve up two tier 10s there. Look how bad the progress these two tier 10s have made is. I'm sorry, but it's really poor progress by them. All of these players were killed by me in the E3, right? And then afterwards, I swear that they just made absolutely no progress towards the enemy team. Uh, looks like their chieftain basically outplayed our chieftain. Um, um, good luck to him. I hope he still manages to win, but I don't think he will be able to uh, with the lack of progress that we've made. Nevertheless, 2,600 damage and 1,700 assistance is pretty cool. I probably just got myself isolated and my team didn't manage to back me up, but GG. They could have backed me up from this corner, they could have backed me up from that corner, they could have back backed me up from here, from there, anywhere. I really thought this was quite a, a nice strong defensive location to get into where I could hope to help my team out. Oh wow, the enemy chieftain just got absolutely farmed by a TS5 and a Progetto, so as long as ours doesn't just expose his whole butt to the side here, he should be okay. Oh, this is actually looking like it could be a win now. It definitely is looking like it could be a win now. Now that their chieftain just threw, well maybe they've given everyone chieftains now and maybe I don't need to worry so much about them. Unfortunately, the T95 gets a good kill on the 263. Our Chieftain manages to finish off their M6Y. And now this T95, if he gets locked in place, oh, the, the TS5 is clearly firing heat at him here, which is quite good for us as well. But man, the enemies are starting to make progress in other parts of the map. Mm. Oh, it's a close one. But I still think that the enemy team are going to be able to take this one. But the TS5 narrowly avoids damage from the T95. We have our Progetto up on the hill, seeing if he can manage to get some crossfire in here. Trying to focus up on the Scorpion G who's spotted, but really he needs to try and get himself into a position where he can provide some crossfire for the Chieftain. Oh gosh, there's a near full health TVP and one shot from the T95 now reduces them a little bit. And oh god, the T95 game just comes out and I lose it because of the blooming Ladybird. And oh no, can you believe how good this session was going up until that bridge cliff dive? Q, 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 Q. With three minutes left on this game, will my team be able to come back into it? Very doubtful. Right now, what's happening is the Borask on the enemy team is just going to be flanking around, trying to get into a position to either assassinate the TS-5. There he is. There's the Borask. Exactly what I thought would happen. Now the TS-5 has really got the, the time limited. Puts a great shot. This TS-5 is doing a great job here right now. We need our Progetto to get some shots into this Borask, otherwise bad things are about to happen. The TS-5 pings the map. The Chieftain on our team kills the T-95. The Borask manages to get behind our hero, TS-5. That TS-5 really did a lot of very good work. Now, can a Progetto manage to clip out this Borask who's probably going to be reloading here? Don't stop, bud. Don't stop, bud. He's not going to just drive around the corner into your line of fire. Come on, mate. Put the pressure up. Get the pressure on that Borask who's probably going to be trying... There we go. Oh, oh, this just got in. Oh, no, it didn't. No, it didn't. Because the Chieftain, unfortunately, didn't manage to interrupt the cap circle. Oh, well. GG, well played to the enemy team. What did I do wrong here? Uh, oh, the Progetto had a shot there. That was actually really close in the end. What a shame that, uh, frankly, our T-110 E3 and our Chieftain just didn't really succeed at digging out their Chieftain. And that's what it is, right? It's usually just the tank that can sit in the hold down position at tier 10 when it comes to having those god tier turrets like you have on Chieftains and you have on Grand Vongs. Alrighty then. So not the best game there for, me, for the AMX M451, but at least I didn't drive off a bridge and get myself completely uh, destroyed. We actually end up finishing third on experience. Uh, it wasn't too bad. My marksmanship was pretty good. We hit every shot we fired. And yet, unfortunately, I really helped this E3 to, you know, do their early damage. But afterwards, they just did absolutely nothing. Um, and their Chieftain just chilled in that position. Uh, and well played to this T95 for finishing me off and managing to come around the corner. Can you believe it? I drive my T95 off a bridge. Then I get dominated by a T95 in that game. Q, 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 Q. Nevertheless, considering that the matchup wasn't perfect, hopefully you all got to see that the AMX M4 Emily 51 is an absolute performer. Alrighty then, 
Ladies and gents, boys and girls, I can't believe I'm about to do this, but I'm about to play the E50 live on YouTube. Uh-oh. E50? It's meant to be a weak tank, right? Well, no, not at tier 9. The E50 at tier 9 has the same rate of fire as uh, the E50M at tier 10. And if you load gold in tier 9, you have the same pen as the standard rounds. Well, you use the same ammunition that you do as standard at tier 10. So effectively, you can play the E50M at tier 9, as long as you're willing to just fire a load of gold, then you're going to be pretty much the same kind of tank. Alright, the E50, why does it perform well? Well, it's a heavily armoured medium tank that has a consistent 105mm gun. And unlike the E50M, its rate of fire at tier 9 is pretty darn good. It fires 6.25 rounds a minute with 390 alpha damage. This vehicle, it's it's just great for being able to bully out those tier 7s and those tier 8s when you manage to get into matchups like this. Alrighty then, so we will not win the Valley. Uh, they've got a Conqueror, an E75 and an Emil too. The Valley is going to be a disaster, which means that I have to try and push into the town. Now I'd like to mention there are actually two ways that you can play the, uh, the E50. You can either use the 88mm or you can use the 105mm. The 88mm on this tank, uh, Wargaming nerfed quite substantially because they uh, just decided to get rid of a lot of the vehicle's rate of fire, which kind of really held the, the gun back. Was the main reason why you would use that gun was because of the crazy DPM you could achieve with the 88mm on this tank. Now I would use the 105mm because it's just so much more darn consistent. You know, you've got like 390 alpha, 270 millimeters of pen on your premium rounds. That's more than enough for tier 9. Although, when I think about it, actually, it's not more than enough for tier 9. There are quite a few situations where I'd far rather have those high explosive anti-tank rounds like you can have on a T-54. Now, this is a very weird situation. The enemy Skoda T-50, who I guess I'm matched up against, uh, decided to just rush into the valley and is going after a T-69. Um, and it looks like the Scorpion G just shut them down pretty hard. All right, well, I want to get forwards here. I don't really want to play that passive game because I've got a bad feeling that the enemy heavies are about to start absolutely demolishing our town. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set up shop and hopefully get some nice side scraping going. And that's where this vehicle can be absolutely awesome. And there we go. There's an E75. I'm not going to be able to pen him with my uh, regular rounds. So now we're going to start reloading gold. And there's a tortoise. And we, with our gold rounds, can easily manage to go through him. i got to be careful here, though, because this is not exactly looking like the best trade deal in World of Tanks history. That Emil's down one. If the Emil goes down two, I might try and make a push play. I'm actually a little bit concerned in this position here that I might just get pushed by a tortoise. I'm actually going to make a bit of a tactical withdrawal here because I do feel like I'm just in a... I'm, I'm too focused there. I'm too focused. It's really not going to work for me. And unfortunately, I'm going to take a second round from the Emil who decided not to reload. And good thing I fell back because, look, the Tortoise and the E75 are about to come around that corner. Okay. 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 Remember, the E50, the E it's, it's not really kind of like your all-round just frontal tank. It is meant to uh, also be kind of a bit of a sniper. All right, that Emil 2 is in a very scary position. Uh, my team, if they were here, they could easily be able to shoot the Emil 2. So I actually don't like the Emil 2's position at all. Um, I'm, I'm really concerned that that Emil 2 can sit there because he should be getting nailed constantly by any kind of tanks that we have back there. All right, this Type 5, Type 4 Heavy, I should say, sorry, is having a bit of a rough one. I've got to try and get into position to maybe be able to help him. Maybe I can even sit behind these bushes without getting found, or at least I can just fire through this gap. Mm, it's a bit of a shame. I'd love to be able to get this tortoise right about now. He's one of the most dangerous tanks, as we've mentioned, and he is clapping his way through our team. Um, come on, baby. Come on, baby. Let's see if we can manage to get these shots in. These heavy tanks are just chilling. I'm not going to pen that position reliably. It's it's a chancy pen for me. Um, gosh, these heavy tanks are causing me a lot of issues. Not going to lie. Shall I try and go for his weak point on the top left? Oh, Tortoise is managing to put gold rounds right through our turret. He's probably going to do it again to us in a second unless we're careful. I can't pen him there. Oh, this is not good. 
Man, the enemy have just got such a monster team. And is that Tortoise just coming around as if he doesn't care right now? And why should he, right? Okay, I've got to go for his weak point on top of the tank. And I'm missing and I'm bouncing and I feel like I'm cursed right now. Wow, I couldn't reload in time. The Scorpion's going to try and get me. If I don't help my E75 out this... Uh, Moistion, sorry. This game is over. Okay, the Tortoise is nearly down, but there's an Emil who's got my side now. And yes, my Indian Panzer is trying to fall back. And this is not looking good for us, boys and girls. What can I do? What can I do? Ah, I think you're seeing why tanks like the Tortoise and the E75 and friends are just so darn powerful. And that is they can basically just shove into you and there's precious little that you can do about the situation. I'm, I tried to fire my premium rounds through the uh, Tortoise's supposed weak point towards the top right. Or it's not really so much a weak point, but it is a flatter part of the Tortoise. But unfortunately, the E50 didn't have the... Um, didn't have the pen. So what did I do wrong here? Well, what I did wrong here is I probably tried to help out these tanks. Because I knew that we had a Moistune, a Type 4 Heavy, and an M6Y on our team. If I didn't help these players to be able to win, uh, yeah, we weren't going to win. Well played to the Tortoise on the enemy team for just shoving through. I should have probably hit a round or two more on their weak point. Ah, well, you know. Oh my lord! How can we go from having such an awesome round in the Tortoise? To then the curse of the ladybird on the bridge, and then everything starts to come tumbling down. Oh well, that's life. I also want to just take a quick look on battle hits. This is a modification that you can use to see where your shells went um, and how they went into your vehicle. Wow, that was fortunate. He hit right on the pixel. If it hit light a bit towards the left, it would have been okay. Another pixel shot pen. Um, that was, I guess, me side scraping badly against the tortoise nice shot that's obvious right and that one was just going in through the side let's take a look to see how we didn't manage to pen so yeah that was my fault i didn't fire gold at the beginning of the game if i fired gold i would have put a hit on the e75 um that is just me getting unlucky that is me getting unlucky because look this one goes in right and then boing boing uh that one went high and then this one went low mm. yeah i'm not doing some kind of a world of tanks dance that's for sure Oh well, okay, so you know what, if you can't beat them, join them. If we just got destroyed by Namil 2 in our E50, um, couldn't really manage to just be the heavy tank. So maybe that's exactly what I need to be today. Maybe I need to be the heavy tank. Alright, so I'm going to put a turbo on this vehicle. I'm just going to spend the extra 300,000 credits. Ouch, that's painful. If I wasn't playing live on YouTube, I would probably have just demounted that. Um, and I'm going to use a rotation device on this tank, and I'm not going to use vert stabs. Although, that's a dubious decision. I still think that uh, using vert stabs would probably be better on the Emil 2, but as I've got the rotation device on, I'll just have to deal with it. And it also can help the turret traverse of this vehicle. Alright, so Overlord, this is a great map for the Emil 2. But the, the problem is, is that, uh, yeah, there are a lot of very good tanks on the enemy team as well. So I've got to play that, like, support role. Let's play that support role boys and girls where do i need to go anywhere along this ridge is great you can start here but then they get crossfire over here as you can see my view range isn't very good so my spotting capacity is not going to be excellent but the emil 2 why is it strong fantastic turret autoloader with 440 alpha damage the same gun that you have on the Kranvang, which i featured on my channel a couple of days ago and so it shouldn't be any surprise as to why this vehicle has um, one of the best win ratios of any tier 9 heavy, at least on the European server in the last 30 days. Man, its turret traverse is still bad, even with the rotation device on this tank. That's definitely quite alarming. And unlike the uh, E50, I actually have high explosive anti-tank rounds that probably would have won me the game in that last example. But oh well, GG, well played. That tortoise got me good and I didn't do nearly enough, uh, nearly enough damage for my uh, E50. But look at this flexibility. I mean, how crazy is that? That is Swedish auto-loading heavies. Finding positions that other tanks can only dream of using and being able to be safe while exposing your turret within them. That is what it's all about. Okay then, so, uh, Mr. Leopards caught us out on this ridge. We lost the E50 game, Q, 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 Q. I just lost three games in a row. That curse of the ladybird, man. Curse of the ladybird. All right. Um, let's see if we can manage to jump on Mr. Type 61. Come on, Mr. Type 61. Probably not going to be able to make that work. 
Um, yeah, this is where not having view range kind of sucks in World of Tanks, not going to lie. Um, I still should be able to get some shots over here, but you also risk getting shot from bushes over there or managing to get dumped on by RT, so I've got to be careful. That position that I was in earlier was actually pretty darn good for managing to catch a Type 61 here. I got spotted again. Hmm. Oh, there he is. There he is. There he is. I wonder who else is spotting me. It could be anything. It could be like a leopard. It could be like a char. There's two leopards on the enemy team. There's the char. Didn't quite manage to get the shot in there. 263 up towards the side. Yeah. We're not able to hide in the bushes because obviously we're a heavy. And because of our low camo, that means that we're going to get spotted before, well... We're going to get spotted, and quite often they're not going to get spotted. Nevertheless, let's try and use this rock to protect our side turret. See if we can manage to just try and catch some shots. Just try and keep my opponents honest on this ridge line. Man, whenever you're playing a Cranvon, you do feel like a bit of a kid in a candy store with how you can work a ridge line. There's just so many options. Nice shot. I'm just going to reload. As a rule of thumb for me, if I don't think I'm going to get to fire in the next... Uh, five to ten seconds in a Swedish auto-loading heavy, then I'll reload, because then at least I'll be able to be reloaded for the next engagement. And the last thing that you want is to um, to not be reloaded. Alright, so I'm going to cross this gap. It's a bit dangerous. Hopefully I don't get punished. This tank is a lot slower than my Grand Barn. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and see if I can isolate this char, future 4. And I can. But, yeah, I got shot from the back, but they're all reloading now, so... Oh, that was a lot of health that I just lost to put in three rounds. Yeah, right in the side of the tower. Oh, this guy doesn't like me. Well, well played, Char. Oh, please, please kill him, STRV. Okay, thank you, Leopard. I appreciate it. Oh, thanks, RT. I appreciate that as well. Damaging shell from the back of the map. And I am not very healthy now. Oh, well, oh, well, oh, well. It doesn't look like it is my day for World of Tanks, boys and girls. Maybe I'm playing a little bit loose. Maybe I'm a little bit frustrated after the E50M game. Oh, not E50M. I wish I played an E50M, honestly. Well, I'm not really making these tanks look like the best tanks in the game at Tier 9. And I don't really feel like my team is also helping me out right now. I'm not going to lie. Well, it looks like those players aren't spotting me, so maybe I can fall back, and if I don't, well, at least I can just... At least I can drown my sorrows. How? With fresh air outside, of course. Fresh air outside. That's that's how I'm going to drown my sorrows. Honestly, it's a glorious day. I need to go for a walk. Whoa! I mean, look, even if I am playing... Oh, Artie, please don't do this. Even if I'm not playing my best in this Emil 2, we still done 2,200 damage, right? And that is without ricocheting a single shot. And now it's because I was getting nailed in the side of the turret. Um, because I had to try and expose to be able to get that Char Future 4. But for every time you get into like a, a nightmare matchup like this. Where you're having to deal with tier 10 tanks and artillery. The Mil 2 is still just an absolute voracious. A voracious lad. A voracious lad. It's a hungry, hungry tank. Just hoovering up the enemy team. Alrighty then. Um, I don't really want to go and sit behind this Type 61. Because I might get him spotted. Well, well, I won't get him spotted, but I might get spotted and then the enemy might shoot at me. So there's a Kranvang on the enemy team who's on full health, which is very alarming. But luckily for us, their chieftain is dead. Our chieftain's deciding to try and push the valley. Hopefully this Type 61 makes a bit of a misplay. One of our Kranvangs is very low on hit points. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to... Oh, I was thinking about rotating around. Is this guy going to shoot me? He is going to try to. Oh, I tried it. Their arty's going to kill me unless I go forwards. Oh, their arty's going to kill me unless I move. I don't think I'm spotted anymore, so maybe I can just fall back off the ridge. You know what? This game... Uh, I was going to say it just got interesting, but I just realized we're down 5,000 hit points, even though we've got the same number of tanks. Man, their arty has it in for me. As they should do. Uh, these tanks, these tier 9 tanks, are very powerful indeed. Um... Holy moly, I just realized this is actually kind of winnable because they've all decided to go down to the beach. So maybe if we can uh maybe if we can get above these players. Oh, 
Is that T30 over there, though? I don't have the best of view range. Maybe, just maybe. Oh, there's the T30. Maybe, just maybe. Nah, this T30 is going to get us. Oi, oi, oi. Maybe, just maybe. These rocks don't look... These rocks look a little slippy, to be honest with you. Oh, I can't do this. The art is going to get me, I think. Okay, how can I... How can I handle this? I'm spotted. I'm proxy spotted. Artie's going to get me now. Ooh. Ooh. These players evidently know that I was planning on getting above them, and it just really didn't work out well for us there. Holy moly, I just realized both of the enemy RTs are dead. Uh, when the hell did that happen? Oh my goodness gracious. Awareness of a... Awareness of a... What is not very aware of the situation? An, an ostrich? Oh, hello. STRV 103B managing to come round the corner. Ooh. Very interesting. This game is actually getting closer and closer. Minute by minute. Hmm. What do you think my chances are here against the uh, 777? Very cool, very cool. Man, my reticles are very big when I don't use vertical stabilizers. Oh man, the enemies are starting to win the east, unfortunately. My arty should be able to clap this player. Or I will. I guess he realized that arty was about to get him. Okay, 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 okay. Yes, never give up. Down to 119 hit points. Oh, leopard. Down to 119 hit points on the other flank after that Char Future 4 engagement. Wow. Happy that we possibly are coming back into this game. I've got to wait for my team to make sure that they flank the uh, Leopard a little bit more here. He's probably behind the buildings. Man, my Cranvong is doing the business. The business, Mr. Cranvong. Where's that T30 going? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I guess he had enough. I guess he had enough. Mate, I know how it feels. All right. Ladybird invaded my monitor. And I decided to literally just flip my T95 off a bridge. Wait, look at me and this Cranvang. We did it. We did it, Cranvang. We're very balanced tanks. Very balanced vehicles. Swedish auto-loading heavies. Definitely not meta. I honestly think this leopard might just come up. Nice. I, I honestly thought I was going to have a terrible game here. And in the end, 4,000 damage. Alright, I guess that's why this vehicle is just so darn good. So yeah, I mean, apart from the... Uh, <laughs> apart from the T95 uh, bridge dive. Um, and... Uh, uh, yeah, apart from that E50 game where I just probably could have aimed a little bit better and I was probably a little bit flustered. Uh, yeah, all in all, pretty okay. We'll take it. We'll take it, ladies and gents. That was a really nice comeback. It was looking like the game uh, was going to be a lot closer than it actually was. And so we finished second on experience and second on damage. Why the Emil 2 is just performing so well for all of the same reasons that I said the Cranvang, that everybody wants to, to get it, get their hands on it. Uh, on my video on Tuesday. So all in all, definitely uh, not the, the best session of World of Tanks. Uh, especially in my T95. That one really pains me. Especially considering in the T95, uh, I do run uh, two premium consumables. <laughs> that was a, a very expensive credit loss of World of Tanks. Alrighty then. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, those were the best tier 9 tanks in the game that are available freely inside Tank Trees. Really hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know in the comments what is your favourite tier 9 tank and why. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.